It's that time of year. Eurovision. Hope you like this new uh, little setup I have here. I just kind of wanted to experiment, so I don't know if this is going to stay or not. But if you guys do like this, then um, I'll actually try and improve this, because uh, here's a picture of what it actually looks like, this setup. Yeah, not so great. So if you do like this, then I'll actually improve upon it and make it something permanent. So what exactly is Eurovision, you may ask? Well, I think really it's just a song contest unlike anything you've ever seen before. Every year you'll be greeted by a wide variety of music. Just to give you a rundown of what to expect in Eurovision, you got your ballads, pop songs, innovative and creative songs, songs that celebrate ethnic values, diversity, and then the weird but this isn't just a song contest, it's more so a live stage performance contest as well. Whatever is happening on stage means just as much, if not even more, than the vocals themselves. So because of that, those weird songs can actually become fan favorites for how wacky and entertaining they are. Now even if you haven't watched Eurovision, you may be familiar with some of it without even realizing. Remember that Beggin cover from the guy with the raspy voice that was trending on TikTok for a while? That band won Eurovision back in 2021. Or have you been listening to the radio as of recent? Because for whatever reason, this song's been played a bajillion times as of late. And if that is the case, that's a Eurovision winner from 2019. Now I got into Eurovision back in 2019, and I would say it was a pretty good year to get into it. You had a diverse variety of options when it came to songs. You had Italy's, Norway's, Czech Republic's I really liked. There was just a lot of good songs that year. And from there, I've been hooked. I look forward to this competition pretty much every single year. This is like a second Christmas for me. Anyways though, how does the competition work exactly? Let's go over how you earn points, the voting format. There are two ways you can earn votes, through the national jury and the televote. Each participating country has both and can award points to 10 different nations excluding their own. Points range around 1 to 8 and the big earners can actually get 10 or 12 points. The jury are basically the higher ups, the quote unquote professional judges. All you need to really know about them is that they reward ballads and generic pop songs way more points than they should be earning. Oh, and they'll also f over at least one country every year. Please, you must we have, have spoken. spoken. Now the televote is a lot more simpler. It's just the people's vote. And because of that, obviously you'll get a much better idea of who Europe actually wants to win. Now for the competition format. To start out, there is a semi-final that includes every participating country. This semi-final will see all the nations be split into two groups. This year, semi-final one has 15 countries and semi-final two has 16. 10 nations from each group with the most points will qualify for the grand final, the big show. Eurovision also has this thing called the Big Five that includes Germany, the UK, Spain, Italy, and France. They automatically qualify for that grand final as they're considered the founding nations, but they still do perform in the semi-finals just for everyone's entertainment. The same also goes for the reigning champions, Ukraine. So in total, there will be 26 countries that will be participating in the grand final. And of course, in the grand final, whoever has the most points in total from the jury and the televote will win the competition. So with that out of the way, here is now my personal ranking for all the songs in this year's Eurovision. I'm putting Poland here for one reason and one reason only. TVP. So before the main competition, each country participating has a song contest of their own to determine what song they send to Eurovision. TVP, Poland's largest TV network, was behind their competition, and to say it was suspicious would be an understatement. Let me set this up for you. So there were two frontrunner songs that had a chance at a berth at Eurovision. Solo by Blanca and Gladiator by Jan. Jan was the fan favorite as the song won all 12 possible points in the televote. However, it got absolutely shafted by the jury vote. Blanca, on the other hand, was given all 12 points from the jury, which was met with boos throughout the audience. Now, why was the audience so dissatisfied? Well, this is where things get a little messy. There were a lot of accusations of Solo, the song that Blanca made, being heavily promoted by TVP before the show. The jury themselves were accused of cronyism and even nepotism. Accusations included intentionally lowering the score of Jan in favor of Blanca. It was also alleged that Blanca and the son of the chairman of the jury knew each other personally although that was later denied. However, there were questions asked about another jury member due to Blanca using a dance group they owned. If that wasn't bad enough, the formats for the results sequence was changed multiple times by TVP, 
right before the show, and even during the live show. The later change was the most odd, because TVP decided to only show the overall votes instead of the actual detailed televote votes. They would actually be pressured into doing so the very next day. And maybe this is a little more subjective, but Yan Song is significantly better than Solo. It's not even a question. TVP quite literally rigged the competition to bring a mid-song instead of a certified top 10 in my opinion. But to end this one off, if you want some more entertainment, just go and look at the comments and also the likes to dislikes ratio of Solo. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Tell me more about me, you are... Azerbaijan's song feels like a late 2000s insurance commercial ring. I don't know why, but this free credit report ass songs hook is so irritating to hear. Listen, okay, I, I don't want to attack the, the artists or anything like that, you know, they put a lot of work into this. These aren't just like football kits where I look at a white shirt and say this is absolute dog shit. But I'm sorry, man, this just isn't good. I will say it gets a little bit better towards the end, but that hook, if I hear it one more time, I might go insane. San Marino songs in recent years, very well known for their sexual undertones. Not really sure why, but, you know, they're always pretty catchy. This one's just boring. Really f***ing boring. Georgia is a very interesting case, because I do like the sound of the song, and also the vocals are really good. But dear god, it feels like I'm hearing an Asian language being actively translated by Google Translate into English. All I'm saying, right, is that this song is so confusing on so many levels that it kind of takes away from the experience. Listen, in the year 2023, when we have literal subtitles to help us out here, you do not have to make a song in English. Usually you can make up like what a song is saying, even if sometimes the English might be a little broken. That's totally fine. But this, this, I, I can't make that exception. I would have loved if this was in Georgian, because then it would probably actually make more sense, and honestly, Sometimes songs that aren't in English just sound better. I mean, you, get, you got stuff like, life is love, thing is known. What does that even mean, bro? Iceland is, um, yeah, it's, it's alright. I don't have much else to say other than I really like the singer's energy. I think her performance will at least transform this song. Because this song really does not match that energy whatsoever. Mama, copila, tractora. <laughs> In Eurovision, you will be guaranteed at least one extremely weird song. And this is it. This is the kind of song that you just think in your head, what the f*** did I just subject my ears to? But over time, that little contagious hook starts to burrow its way into your head. Just so more people understand what this song is about, because not everyone is as curious as I am and goes to the Wikipedia page of every single song. It's an anti-war song with subtle symbolisms that make fun of Vladimir Putin and Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko without ever mentioning either names. This is due to the fact that you actually can't promote political messages at Eurovision. Belarus tried this last year, and they got suspended. Now, despite this being pretty far down the list and my ears never forgiving me for what they've listened to, please televote, please jury, Send this to the grand final, because it would be so f***ing funny. Do you wanna dance? Malta Haiki reminds me of AJR and also Scream's FIFA 16 soundtrack for whatever reason. Nothing special, just a, you know, generic party anthem. But it does have a very addicting saxophone. I will say that. Greece. What, what do I say about Greece? Well... I liked last year's a lot, actually. This year, decent. I like the message. I think it's something that a lot of us can relate to, but I'm just not really feeling it. I don't know if it's the music or the voice. It's probably the music. I don't know. It's just, it just doesn't work for me. Tonight, we are I know some comments were saying that Ireland are like the Real Madrid of Eurovision. I mean, if you consider it in terms of success, then absolutely. They've won it the most times out of every other nation seven to be specific. But that was all the way back when they were absolutely dominant throughout the late 80s to 90s. Now it is a completely different story. 
they've released a lot of trash as a recent. Finally though, it, it looks like Ireland are slowly getting out of that slump. And hopefully with their piece of sh creative director out the window, I will never have to subject my ears to That's Rich ever again. This song in particular though, feels like an Andrew McMahon in the wilderness X like fun mashup. You know, remember fun? Some nights? You know, th those guys. Vocals are extremely passionate, the music really complements it well. It's just a very good, positive song, you know? I, I, I like it. Do ya? Do ya. Kevin Keegan's favorite Albanian saying. Very dramatic song, puts a lot of emphasis on keeping strong family bonds through tough times, which is pretty interesting. Unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna do well in the competition just because the music video does a lot to convey that message. And I'm not sure if this will really replicate to the live stage, but overall, I thought it was a pretty decent song. Maybe watch the world on fire. And it's all because of you. Belgium, song about empowerment. Classic Eurovision. Nothing entirely special about this song, I just really like the hook. Duovite, uh, it's, it's okay. I commend the singer, cause you know, he seems very passionate about what he's singing. I mean, you would, you would hope so. Last year had a ballad as well, but it sounded really, really good in the music video. Um, but it's just kind of disappointed, and I feel like the same thing's gonna happen here. There is always time to get back on track. Estonia, known for its Avicii clones, have actually gone a different direction for once. The song's pretty good, the depth in vocals really makes you feel the impact. Love the message as well, it covers social anxiety it seems like. Even more inspiring is that this person who wrote about her experiences one day is now going to perform on the biggest stage of her career. So it really just goes to show that no matter who we are, none of us are alone, and we can all climb out of our shell. All right, enough sentiment. Let's go to the next one. Denmark. I quite like this song. If I was still in my upbeat indie phase of 2018, this would probably be in the top five. Although one thing I will say is that I have to listen to this song without the music video. Because dear God, when this dude makes a heart with his hands, it tests my fight or flight instincts like they've never been tested before. And here's the other thing, okay? This TikTok e-boy looking motherfucker is 25. <laughs> Jokes aside though, I'm sure he's a nice guy <laughs> and the song is pretty enjoyable. I don't wanna be a soldier, soldier. Switzerland since 2020 has given us ballad after ballad after ballad with these great singers. Every single year, they they've basically learned the Eurovision meta, which is send a ballad because the jury will eat that shit up like nothing. And this year's song is absolutely no different. That first exquisite piano swing that you hear in the first like four seconds of the song. Oh, I thought I was about to hear a masterclass. And then it just got really generic, really quickly. Great anti-war message, but it just felt kind of empty, honestly. It's powerful though, and the singer, like I said before, has a great voice. And that is why it's higher on this list. That being said though, expect this song to get at least 5 trillion points from the jury. I was a really, really big fan of Spain's performance last year. I thought they should have won. Don't ask me the color of anything. 2023 Spain gives us something a little different. Flamenco. It's a really passionate and intense song, and the music video with it is pure artistry. Makes sense though, the artist isn't just a singer, she's also a designer. But I think you're all gonna hate me for this, because I know this one's kind of a favorite in the odds, especially. I don't think this song is for me. I don't know, every single time I try and listen to it, I really try and make it grow on me. But it's just not growing on me, man. Me personally, I hope this song does really well in the grand final. And I think it really will, because it has a lot of potential when it comes to performance. Gonna stand in like a unicorn. Firstly, I just want to say, thank f I never have to see Michael Ben David ever again. That all aside though, this year's song, very typical theme of Eurovision. Empowering, pop-filled song. I do quite like some of the aspects of this song, but one thing that just kind of messes with me is I, I just can't take this song seriously. It's a song that's trying to take itself seriously as well, but every single time I hear Unicorn, I can't, bro. I can't do it. I just can't. Listen, it's another one of the favorites up in the odds, so I'm probably one of the unpopular opinions. A lot of people are gonna give me shit for this one, but I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Lithuania, 
pretty underrated song. I haven't heard much about this one. Great vocals, the hook is really catchy. In fact, it was going on in my head throughout this morning. I don't think it goes far in this competition just because it feels like it lacks that energy to make it to the grand final, but I still quite like this song. You can, you can break a broken heart. Ah, you can't break a broken heart daily life of a Philly sports fan. I don't really know what to say about this one. I just I just like it. It's very passionate. It's got a cool little story. I think the lyricism is really good in this one. I don't find any joke. Holy shit, it's Joe Jonas. Losing myself on chasing her. So, fun fact, Duncan Lawrence, who we've already mentioned before, who won Eurovision back in 2019, is actually one of the songwriters on this one. I really like how this one's kind of designed. It feels like a three-arc short film. You get this transition from somber doubts of what am I doing with my life to this upbeat optimism of I'm going to do something different with my life. And that's that's pretty cool. I like that. Song sounds great as well. And just like last year, I think the singers could really catapult this one up in the grand final. <laughs> Portugal have stopped submitting mid since their win back in 2018, and it is great to see. I know the televote will definitely disagree with me, but I really, really loved Portugal's submission last year. The more I listen to the song that will be submitted this year, though, the more it has grown on me, and I think, honestly, it'll continue going up this ranking as the days go by. It's got this Iberian bounce that just makes you want to, like, dance. It's just so catchy. You know, I, I don't, I, I'm not good at these music terms, okay? All I'm gonna say is it's, it's good. It's a good song. This guy looks a little familiar. You made me do this. Ah. This song is quite literally last in the odds, so it might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion to put it this far up the list. But I can't help it, man. It's jazzy. It's funky. It's a bop. Moldova reminds me a lot of uh, Goa from a couple years ago. Song sounds great. I love whatever electronica this is. And dear God, that flute goes hard. I think a live performance of this could really set this as a dark horse in the competition. This song is very much near the bottom of the odds, and it makes sense. This isn't exactly a Eurovision song. It doesn't feel like one at least. But this isn't Eurovision's ranking. It's my ranking. And I quite like this song. And I really hope they replicate at least some parts of this music video because I am absolutely in love with this surrealist art. I don't know if surrealist art is actually the right term here, but I've never studied art, so we're just gonna go with it. Promise me it's gonna be all right. I think finally, after so many years, I don't know why it took this many years, countries are figuring out why Monoskin won back in 2021. So with that, all the rock songs that had cheap attempts at tugging at your nostalgia have been ditched. And thank f***ing God. Because Australia have whipped out the heavy metal. And it is so good. I especially love the last bit of this song. Because we get a goddamn f***ing guitar solo. Guitar solo, you hear me? I'm very excited to see the live performance of this one. Because even the music video looked really good. It's a sad time, fellas. We can no longer make fun of the UK for submitting mid every year. This year's song isn't exactly as impressive as last year, but still got a very catchy hook. In general, it's just very catchy. I'm very interested to see what the live performance will be because the music video was really innovative, was really creative, and I hope to see some of those aspects in that live performance. Blood and bitter, sweet and bitter. By the grace of the gods, Germany has stopped submitting trash. No longer do we have to witness poor gym class hero clones, sisters, and thank the gods, no more dancing middle fingers. Europe, we've won! We've won! I can't believe I'm saying this, but I like a song that Germany has submitted. And another thing, it's a song called Blood and Glitter. The Germany absolutely nailed it this time. It feels more so on the German brand too. An absolutely awesome hard rock song. It does seem like, according to the odds, that more people like Australia's than Germany's. I will give my one reason as to why I like Germany's just a little bit more than Australia's. It's that synth keyboard in the hook. This may be the first time I have ever heard Edgar Allan Poe not be associated with death, darkness, horror, ravens, or Baltimore, which in itself is 
I'm gonna stop myself there. For me, this is peak Eurovision, a song that really doesn't take itself seriously, but still manages to absolutely slap. The charisma in the music video already was very impressive, so I could absolutely see this easily being a top 10, at least. Czech Republic was like, before I even got into my listening of any of these songs, was like the one that people were looking out for, was like the Dark Horse. Completely understandable, because that hook is atmospheric. It's that spine-tingling that you could listen to again and again, and of course, I have listened to it a lot. I know I've said this plenty of times, and I'll say it again, I really am excited about the live performance of this one, especially since the music video had a lot of creativity behind it. Armenia, first part of the song, I sleep. Drink smoothies at near cafes? What? Armenia, second part of the song though? Real shit. This went from near last place in the rankings for me to top 10. Because once that rap goes on, it is so good that you completely forget whatever was that beginning of the song. Honestly, I think it was kind of cool doing it that way. It felt like it was more of like a simplistic approach to love. And then as you go farther into the song, it kind of gets more complicated and all these kind of complications start building up and stuff. I really like that. And if that was really the vision that they were going for, fantastic. And then almost forgot that part near the end with the Armenian. It has potential to win. It has potential to win. I cheated a little bit here because instead of using the music video, I actually watched the live performance from the national final. But I don't care, man. It was exceptional. Love the energy of the singer. And those vocals have some insane range. There's a lot of aspects of this song that remind me of 2019 submission, and if that's the case, everyone loved it in 2019, and I'm sure it's gonna be the same thing this year. Ukraine, the whole song just hits. I don't really know what else to say. It's just, it's something that you just will constantly be bumping your head to throughout the entire song. The message in this song is even more moving than Ukraine's submission last year. According to the duo, a lot of the inspiration for the song comes from the people with steel hearts protecting all of Europe. Overall, it's just a very passionate and powerful song and deserves to be in the top five. Carpe Diem. Seize the day. And this song sure reflects that with its carefree attitude. I absolutely love this song. It won't be a top five like I have it here, obviously, but I, I don't care. It's easily one of my favorites this year. It gives me like these two door cinema club vibes. It just feels like it belongs on a banger FIFA soundtrack. Listen, like I said before, it's not gonna win. It's probably not even gonna get close, but I am begging you, Slovenia, do not bottle this one like last year. Sweden bring back Laureen, a winner from 2012. And according to the odds, she's got a very heavy chance of once again winning. Now this could be very much skewed because her music video is basically just the live performance. And don't get me wrong, it is absolutely fantastic. But again, we haven't seen all the live performances yet. And if that was the performance for the national final, who knows what we could see in the final. But going back to the performance, it's incredible. Exudes passion. This fiery attitude, and also that last part. The last part just gives you goosebumps. I'm just gonna let my boy Henry Henderson say it for me. Evidemment, I fell in love with this song on the first listen. The song, enchanting, the vocals, entrancing, the way it just transitions from dramatic to groovy. I don't know how it does it, but it works so well. And that performance. Oh! Overall, I just love the aesthetic of this entire song. That, that's why it's number two. We still have one more. It took a lot, and, and I mean a lot, to dethrone France. But Finland did it. Cha 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 is a banger. I, I don't mean that lightly. I mean that in all caps. I mean that in 72 font, actually 100 font. Rap rock to me has always been kind of a hit or miss, more misses than hits, but this one is just out of the park. It's gone, in the lake. I think what really brought Finland all the way up to number one was that last hook, where it kind of changes a little bit in tempo, because it just blew me away. As I've mentioned before, you know, party anthems, they're kind of a typical thing in Eurovision, but quite often they're kind of generic and they lose that kind of party sense to them. But this, Finland's submission, this? This is a proper party song. Easily number one for me. This 
has to win. So that is the long-awaited Eurovision video. I have no idea when this is supposed to come out. I was gonna do my predictions for like the semifinals and stuff, but I don't even know if I'll have this video done before then. So yeah, I will say one thing though, for sure, this ranking will change. I don't know if I'll make a whole video about it, but at least maybe mention something on Twitter because I cannot stress this enough. There have been so many times where the live performances have changed my mind completely. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this Eurovision ranking video. This is something kind of new. I had fun with it, but I'm, I'm not sure how you guys feel about it, so definitely leave that down below. But of course, a massive shout out to all our patrons, including Janos Baras, Chris Damaseno, Milioe009, Aldipu, Alex Rod, Ulta, Min Sumez, Aresan, Carlos Anaya, Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Guy, Joao Carvalho, Jonah, Marco Fujimoto, Miguel Munoz, Return Fire, Rory Burns, Slider Kit, Sniffrix, The Motor Drive, Tomicus, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, Chris Visconsi, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Joe Paricio, Michael Nista, Emmett Weeb, Nish, Patrick Barley, Thomas, and Unbroken Persona. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you want, follow my Instagram if you want, follow my TikTok, trying to get to 20,000 there, and of course, you can follow my more than semi-active Twitch as of recent. But until then, I'll see you guys.